A lot of stuff for a little room, huh? There's so much detail goes into everything in here. I love this. I love You've never it. been in here? I've been in here like virtually. Since when? You were eight years old? Oh, since I was, yeah, 12 or 13. My goodness. Wow. A lot of stuff for a little room, huh? Yeah, so much stuff. Look how many babies you have. Just a few. What the heck? Yeah, just a few in this tiny little room. Look at the fry system. It's all clean and everything. Kind of. Oh, that's beautiful. That's the biggest fire red agassiz I've ever seen in my life. And he's a brute. He picks on everything. He's a Although, I think he has crossed with a female Trifasciata right now. There's, really? there's fry in the cave on the very left. I guess we'll start you'll, up you'll, here. You'll need a, you call it a torch, right? Yeah, torch. Or... You'll need a torch to see him in there. What do you call it? Flashlight. A flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> You see the red ones, little yeah. tiny? Yeah. So that is a female Trifasciata. There's yeah. no male in the tank. But she's on Wrigglers? Yeah. And I think he's the father. Well, he must be if there's no male, yeah. That would be oh. interesting. Shoot, I just realized something we didn't do. What? Clean the glass. Which ones? I can see like drips down here, it drives me crazy. Gosh, you're particular. Oh, man. I didn't even notice it. A, okay, no B-roll until we clean them. <laughs> um, these guys, these are the, the pair that is producing all the fry that you see. So these are your best uh, pair? I pulled these eggs yesterday, or the, no, the day before. Yeah. She bit me. She bit you? Yeah. Did you bleed? Uh, I, not that time, but I felt like I was going to bleed. <laughs> it's amazing. They do pack a punch. Yeah, they do, more than you think. So these are your best ones, obviously, then? The best pair that... The best producing pair right now. Okay. And yeah, then they got that full red coverage. These oh. are definitely the reddest. They're so nice. So these are like, what, how two, long? Two days out of the tank. You'll, you'll see I'm getting about 30% about are fungusing. What's in here? These are R2 eggs. Oh, yeah. So you breed these the same as any old rainbow fish? Well, so far until you tell me how to. I picked the eggs. Oh, you picked the eggs? Yeah. That take me for... Oh, no, these are actually pretty big eggs, aren't they? They're pretty... They're bigger. Com compared to the Praycox ones. You might see, like, in that There's one. eggs in there right now. Do you want to have a look? Or sure, go far? ahead and have a look. So I found that half of the time they spawn in the top mop. Yeah. And half the time in the mop on the ground. Or on the bottom of the tank. Yeah, they, they're not fussy. No. There you go, they're, yeah. Yep, yeah, they're right here. They're definitely bigger. So you picked these eggs? Yeah, I picked them out. <laughs> I picked them out, and then what I'd do is, same thing that you've done there with the mop. Do you put them on one strand of yarn? Nah, I just, I just throw them in. You just throw them in, okay. Yeah, and then they start to hatch after 10 days. Okay, And then, that's the frustrating point. They take so long to hatch. Well, the thing is, I just do, I do eggs until you get hatching. Okay. But I find that... That's what I do with the Praycox. I leave the mop in for 10 days. Yeah. Then I hatch it for 10 days. Yeah. The reason I was picking them is I found that they're pretty bad at eating their eggs. I was wondering that. So you, over 10 days, right? So if you pick your eggs for 10 days, you might end up with like 90 or 100 uh -huh. compared to like if you just pick them on the last day, you get like whatever they spawned on the last day, 20. Got it. Ficata's eggs are even bigger. Yeah, I think I saw some in here yesterday. They eat their eggs too? Um, not as bad for me. It's, it's case by case, I think, with fish. So I've only raised, I think, about six of them up so far. I only had these for a very short time. Okay. There's got to be some eggs in here. Nope. Maybe not. Maybe. And then up here. Oh, stop Whoa. that. Those are, that's a Praycock mop hatching. Yeah. And those ones, oh, sorry, oops, sorry. <laughs> almost all on brine shrimp now. Yeah. 
So what do you feed them for the first few days? I use this powdered powdered fry food. Yeah. Um, and then um, we were talking about this a little bit before. Um, paramecium. Yes. I don't use infusoria. I use paramecium. Okay. So it's basically a straight culture. Which when they start hatching, I'll dump paramecium in, and then I use um, I use a paintbrush like yep. this to feed fry powder. Ah. So I'll basically just go... I've seen this before on your channel, yeah. So I'll just dip it in, and then we'll just do it right here. So, so it just dusts the surface a little bit. Yeah. None of these have eaten today. Crazy. And, and that's easier than trying to go... Yeah, it gets all over your fingers and in the yeah. cracks of your grip. Right. Like, yeah. Fingerprints. Right. Yeah. So I've found you can leave Praycox fry for like easily 12 hours without feeding. Yes, they, they're much sturdier than a lot of other fish. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If that's even a word. Sturdy. Sturdy. They're easy to raise. Yeah. Compared. They're just small. Praycox. So these are all the ones you've raised? Yeah. They're amazing looking. They oh. just look so happy and healthy and clean. Like all your tanks just look so clean. So and they, they, these are about three months old. Yeah, they take forever to grow, hey? Yeah. That's the annoying thing about rainbows. It's just such a long process. I think that's the reason that we don't see them more in the hobby. It's because they're just not commercially viable. I, th I think it's more because they don't color up young enough. That's what, yeah. Uh, these do. Yeah, they're the they, only ones These will show do. their color right away. Yeah. And that's kind of so. like why they're the popular ones. Right. But and, and they don't get overly big. Yeah. Yeah. The other ones that kind of show their color early is the um, Bosmanis. Yes. Yeah. But if I threw mop in here, I'd probably get hundreds of eggs every day. Oh, the, the, that the, filter the, would be covered in them. They're already spawning. That, yeah. that matten filter would just be yeah. littered with eggs. But yeah. So you got the Praycox there. What's up here? Those are um, Perugi, whatever, Lemias. These, these I brought back from um, uh, Chicago. Who had when these? When I spoke there. And they look best from the side. We Go shine on. a light on them for to see how blue the males look. Yeah. Who had these? Just some guy at an auction or? Um, I'll think of his name in a minute. It's uh, Rick Borstein. Rick Borstein's. Yeah. Are they easy to breed? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they take a while to grow. Um, I, you can see I mostly have males in there. Yeah. A few females. And then if you go down here, this is what happens when you take one female and just drop her in a, in a, in a tank and let her drop. <laughs> so these are about two months old. Yeah. Ready to go to market. And I just spied something that was really cool. What? Do I stay still? If you look in that pot right to your right. The Akara's spawned. That is really cool. And a few Praycocks are just for dithers. So the dithers must help these a lot. I think it helped with the aggression. Because I found with cichlids, they get really aggressive with each other. Right. But if there's something else that they have to protect for. Exactly. Like a bristle nose even helps or... Mm-hmm. But... There's a lot of eggs in there. Is there? Yeah, like a lot. How about a torch? Look at all that little, um, you can see the little black spines. So, so I, could, um, I could pull that pot and replace it. Yeah. And I'd end up with a tank of what you have up above you. Yeah. So these sell well? Uh, this is the first time I've actually played with them. I just wanted to play with them because I wanted something different. Yeah. So I got nine about this size five months ago, maybe six months ago. And there's two pairs that are spawning out there, but I, I pulled their eggs once, and that's what these are. Yeah. I pulled their eggs, and they're these. Wow. So that's a, that's a bunch of fry. That's like 500 fry in there. So how do you raise these up? If you I feed them baby brine shrimp. These are, these are actually ready to go to this tank. This tank's cleaned out and ready. Okay. Um, They'll go in that tank probably within the next week. Yeah. Uh, they could go any time. And then just lots of baby brine shrimp and lots of... I actually feed them the fry food too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Have you tried any bug buffet on any of these fish? Um, those guys, the yep. rainbows, every tank on that wall. Every tank on this wall has tried it. Yep, and and all of the plecos down here, the corys, the leopard frogs up there, the snowballs, and then I noticed there was at least one, oh, there's two now, fry in there. Oh, there's babies. Yeah, I thought I only had females, but it turns out I must have males too. Oh. Huh. So you didn't know there was eggs oh, in there? Oh man, I didn't clean the glass again. That drives me crazy, sorry. <laughs> no, I just saw the babies um, late last night when, we, when I got home from dropping you guys off. Oh, that's a nice surprise. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that's actually the best way to raise plecos. I, I don't bother with pulling the eggs anymore on a lot of them. The only issue that you deal with is the babies are hard to net out of there. Yeah. But, if you, but you gotta think about which is harder. You know, I, netting the babies out one at a time or pulling the eggs and hatching them. I've done it both ways. Depends on how bad I want them. Like, like these guys down here. Yeah. These are Wobbin Masters. I've never seen these in real life. Yes. Like honeycomb. Yeah, the honeycomb one. And fry. Where? That, right here on the side. Oh, I didn't even notice it. There you go. <laughs> that one's swimming around. These are so cool. Yeah, I, like like I think these are cool. And they do all the exact same things as a normal bristle nose, like yep. eat the algae. Mm -hmm. They're just a different type. And they keep that pattern. You get, if you get close on the fry, you'll see it already has the honeycomb pattern. Yeah, slightly, hey. So they're the exact same as normal bristle nose, pretty much? Pretty much. Just harder to get. Why do people not have them yet? They're just new. They're too expensive. How much are they? Um, I sell the fry, I think, for 40 bucks each for whole, wholesale. And how much do they make, like normal bristle nose, just like weekly um, eggs? About, about 25 or 30. Um, over in this tank, there's some little bit larger ones, like here. Yeah, so that, would, that one's not ready to go yet, but that would be worth, what, $40 each when you... Right, right. So that's, wait, they go to the shop for that, so they'd sell for like 100 uh, about, yeah, typically about 80 to 100, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. When did these come in? Um, I don't know. I remember, um, I can't even remember where I got them from, to be honest. Yeah. I just saw them. I thought, man, they keep that pattern forever. I have to have them. Yeah. And so I bought five, ended up with those. Yeah. Um, so this is the original breeder. So you still got all five. Y yeah, I, actually... They're not all original. I lost some of them, and then some of them are my second-generation babies from the very first spawn. And I just got a message from one of the guys that I sold them to in Alaska through the co-op. Yeah. And he just had his first spawn after having them for two years. So that take a long time. Yeah. So he grew them from about an inch and a half, and he's now got his first spawn. You know what they may be like? They may be like um, peppermints. Kind of. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Peppermints are a little bit trickier than bristlenose to breed. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they're obviously more expensive. Do you have peppermints in, in America? We do, but um, I haven't been keeping them. You haven't been trying. So. In here are 397 babies, lots of them. Uh, you can't really even see them until I get my hand in there. <laughs> okay. If I go up in here. Wow. See all of them over here. Oh, strobe them out. Oh, jeez. Look how much waste they make. Yeah. I know how clean it's, you like to keep the tanks they, too. They, this is just, they chew up the wood. Yeah. So there's a bunch in there. In there too. Yeah, you must have wood with them. Yeah. Look at all that gunk they make. I gotta just make sure I don't squish one and put it back down there. I've done that before and wonder later. You have? What did I do? Oh, I squished him. Oh, no. So you like keeping them with the the towers and As the fry. Yeah. Yep. Are um, there a few different ages in here of fry too? Yeah, there's um, two different ages, and I think there's some that are approaching adult. Yeah. Yeah. There's some because I I need to get into my a second generation of them myself. Okay. So I have plenty in there to sell, but then there's a there's kind of a larger group and a smaller group. The larger group I'm kind of growing out. The smaller group will sell. And I'm thinking, you know, most people that produce tons and tons of them, they have larger colonies of breeders, mm. not just 
one pair because you only get like 16 to 22 eggs. And they only spawn once or twice a year, yeah. kind of. Yeah, with the weather. Like, yeah, with the weather. That's literally how plecos breed. Right. I think people get this idea like too, oh, I buy plecos, they're easy to, like they take care of their own babies and they're worth a lot, so I make a lot of money. Right. But it's not you, that. They're not like just throwing. Th Raising them is harder than getting them to breed, I think. You reckon? You, you can, I think you can starve them to death really quick. Oh. Um, I, I mean, a lot of people. You mean like the babies? Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people that have don't, they say, well, I bristle nose, they're all dying. It's because they don't feed them enough or they don't have wood in there. Mm. They need something other than just, um, so like pelleted food that, that won't rot, I can overfeed it. Yeah. And it might be in there all day, but eventually it'll get eaten all. Yeah. I mean, that's a good tank that the bug buffet would work yeah, well in. Yeah, they, they've scarfed on it. Yeah. No, that's definitely true. Like you think about, Corey said too, the... You know, like when you get the autos in, mm -hmm. and they all come in skinny, and you put them in like a, a algae-filled tank. tank. Dirty we tank. think about all these bristlenose babies that come out of a, a tunnel, and the parents have already cleaned that tank right. of all the algae. Right. So then, like by the time the babies come out, they have to have something. To eat. They have to have something. Yeah. To eat. Yeah. So, I mean, all the tanks I keep plecos in: almond leaves, wood. Wood. I mean, lots and lots of bug buffet I feed. I mean, but. you can't really do plants because this is what happens. Yes. So these were, see, you can see the plecos, the yep. 397s. The Supposedly, it's not a vegetarian fish, but they will scarf the plants to death. I forget what, oh no, those are festivum babies. Yeah, they're cool. And they're starting to eat the plants. The festivums eat the plants? Yes. What? They're, they eat lots of vegetable. What do you feed these? It's the same. I feed everything pretty much the same. Okay. They're so cute. Are these F1s? Yes, but I don't, I, I, let, I let another guy have the group of mine. Or I shouldn't say have, I sold him the group. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the plan with these? Are you going to keep them? No, they'll go to the co-op, I believe. You're not going to try and breed them again? No. Okay. You're better than me at that then. I, I have, I get like sentimentally attached to all of my fish and then I, I hoard. I and have to, I don't, I don't like I, but, but I don't have, I don't have five billion tanks like you do. I know, but then I can't do the projects properly because I'm I know. focused on a thousand different yeah. things. Yeah. I need to take a, a leaf out of your book, I think. Cause so like, I have to let them go occasionally. You know, yeah. I mean, you can I mean, always get them back. Yeah. For the most part. Um, the ones that I tend to always keep are the angels. Yes. Now, so you can look at how the fry, how full the coverage those are. Yeah. So that Obviously they're going to get some white as they get older. Yeah. They're uh, insanely covered. Yeah. Is this a this is a smaller batch? This one? Yeah. Or uh, you've culled Actually a lot? I in my opinion, most of my batches are fry are smaller right now, and that's mainly because um, over the last two months I've just been dealing with all that health crap. Yeah, yeah. Haven't been able to keep up with everything. But have you culled a lot of these out too? These all look um, perfect. Those have only been culled one time. There's I think there's two in there that I want to cull that I saw the other day. I think people don't don't remember that as well like um, that whole process yeah it's disappointing but you have to you have to as a breeder you have to it's yeah it's your responsibility you can't be right. pumping out right crooked fish and um, yeah. I mean to get those colors right it requires a bit of inbreeding yeah but more prey cocks Jeez. yeah but you know if you notice that's a real small spawn yeah that is small. I like them bigger than that. Uh, Pygmy Cories. I bred those too. They're fun to breed. They are, yeah. I'm growing a group of um, albino pygmies that I'm going to try to breed. What? Where are they? Right, right over here. Behind the bug, bu bu bug buffet. Oh, yeah. So the, this, is the, this is the normal ones. The, the albino ones are in here. So you pull the eggs of these? I do. One at a time. They're a pain in the butt. There's eggs in there now. Those are those are rainbow eggs. Oh, okay. Almost, I'm I'm almost certain because they will lay on the glass, not on the plants. What these arus? Yeah. They lay on the. <laughs> They'll lay in the moss. That's the perfect food for the albinos. Yeah. Albinos, or that's funny, but they're cool. See, I so the way I bred them is, and this is totally different to the way you breed, but I'll just throw them in a tank like that, never clean it feed it and then eventually you see eggs and then the then babies you, just raise up in there oh you don't pull the 
The, no, they don't eat their eggs for me. No, they don't eat their eggs. Yeah. They don't eat their eggs. So you can like almost col colony breed them like yeah. guppies. Yeah. And then the rams? And the rams are at a different temperature. You so a higher temperature. There. There's heaters in all of them. Yeah. But how often they run, hardly any. So you don't heat the room? The room is heated with this hook plugged into that. Okay. Which brings the probe over to here. Jeez. So that's the probe that that's where I'm setting the temperature. Okay. So it it's set at 81 degrees. It usually keeps it about 78, 79. But then rams need warmer than that. Yeah. So I bump them up to about 83 to 86. Okay. And um, like these three tanks, those are the heat controls. Yes. So these are set at 78. So I'm assuming that heater hardly ever clicks on. This is set at 84, and it, I've, I've seen it come on. Oh, I'm only just getting this. Wait, so each heater has its own little... Yes. Like, this thing... You, so you set the, the temperature there. Yes. And that tells the heater when to turn on. Yes. Oh, my gosh. There's so much detail goes into everything in here. Yeah. Like, every individual tank has its own... Not every tank has a heater. Okay. But, like, the ones that the you The ones wanna, that are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this one's important, the RAM one. Yep. Do these, these have ones, These ones, since they have fry, yeah. I just don't want them to go lower. Okay. Okay. Um, this has a heater, obviously. You can see it. Yeah. Down there. Um, and it, it actually is more about 83 degrees in here. And is that, you want the fry growing quicker or? I used to keep the fry rack at about 84. Okay. But then when I started more and more quarries, I had to lower it. So the rams grow slower. Yeah. Um, ideally, I would love to have two of these. Yeah. One hot, one cold, but I don't have space. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> Are you going to expand? Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I only have heaters in those. They hardly ever, I hardly ever see them come on. They come yeah. on when in the red light will come on. Okay. But I've, I've only seen it come on one time. That's the nice thing about the matten filters is it's got that beautiful clean look. Mm -hmm. Like you can hide all of the filter, or well, the matten filter is a filter, but like you can hide the... Um, Anything. Yeah. So uh, some, of the, some of these, because of my water, I have <coughs> crushed coral behind the matten filter. I was going to say that. You know, you can put, put it back there. Yeah, the crushed coral. Like I actually don't use crushed coral, I use chunks of it. Okay, like one or two little pieces. Yeah, yeah. or a handful, depending on what I want. Did you see the video I did with the fish farmer and he puts it in the little fruit bags? Yes, I saw that. That's a nice little tip too. It's not a bad idea. It's a, yeah, I thought it was a good yeah. idea. The other thing is with the matten filter is if you have to net the fish out, like, like let's say there's fish in here. Yeah. Take those two decorations out, I got the whole tank to net. Yeah. Right? True. I don't have to work around ornaments and no. hoses and stuff like that. It's about making it easy for yourself. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I like them too. They're just hard to clean. Do you clean them after every batch? No. So, for instance, um, like the less, like these koi down here we we're talking about before, when you breed them and you remove all these babies, you don't clean that matten filter again. No. Okay. Maybe after two batches. That makes it easy. So, so I, I I do them about about every six months. Yeah. So like these two tanks, are, are I left these dirty on purpose. Yeah. Because if we want to. We'll figure, I'll show you how I go about cleaning these tanks up and re what I call resetting them. Yeah. So they're ready for fry like that. Okay. Um, because basically what I, what, what I would do is I'd think through the whole process. These are almost all, I think they're all female rams. I would take some water from each, put it in five gallon buckets, net all the fish out. Or well, first I'd take all the decorations out, net all the fish out. Then we're going to take the matten filters to the sink clean them, scrub all the sides of the tanks, put them back in, pour the water back in, fill it, fill it with water, and it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot easier than what people think. Um, yeah. The matten filters do take a while to clean, but they also take a while to get dirty. They do. Um, and, and if you get the camera behind, you can see how much gunk settles there. Some people think that's a detriment but at least that gunk is not out where the fish are swimming. That's the one thing that I really liked about them. Yeah. Was that like the gunk was hidden. Yeah. Where 
it, it does, like if you're not on top of your maintenance, it can be like a false right. indicator of how right. clean a tank is. Right. But for filming, it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Was, it makes a big difference. It's, yeah, I'm sure Corey loves coming now, the, to film. There is also a downside to them though, uh, that I found is floating plants are almost impossible. Mm. Yeah. Um, because that's constantly at the surface. I've tried many different floating plants. And like frog bit and all that yeah. doesn't work? Yeah, I mean, you can see down here. The, I have a little bit of salvinia in there. Yeah. It's just, it can't sit. Yeah, so it doesn't spread well. Right. Yeah, I've killed so much floating plant except for duckweed. <laughs> That's the one thing that will always grow. Yeah. So I guess we'll do like a run through maybe of the of the fry rack and then. So you got the stir bays in there. Stir bays in there. There's two different spawns, so there's two different sizes. They actually raise pretty well together then. The next tray is electric blue acaras. Yes. And that's just a fish that I like the color. Yeah. I think it's really cool. I like too when you have a tank just full of them like you do over there. Yeah. Uh, those are German blue rams. Yeah. Normally that would be a whole, tr it would look like this in a bigger tray. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I tried something new and it didn't work. Let's just put it that way. What'd you try? Um, I tried letting the parents hatch them. Ah. And then I tried siphoning them out. Normally I would just take the thing out and you'd get a bigger hatch like this. But did the parents just eat down a few of them or something? Uh, as soon as I, I was in there with the hook, they just started scarfing them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. What I couldn't believe about your room was that you were growing out fish in two foot tanks. Yeah. I find that crazy. These, aren't, these are only 20 inches too. Yeah. They're smaller than two foot. <laughs> but the water changes is automatic twice a day a little bit. Twice a day, like, so what, you reckon like 10% a day? Um, on, yeah, by the, by the end of the day, it'd be 10%. Yeah, that's yeah. ideal. So then it gets the nitrates down. Cause yeah, I couldn't, I just couldn't believe, like I was looking at this room when I was thinking about setting mine up and I really wanted it to be exactly like this, but it's hard cause everyone's got different conditions. Yes. And like how much time you can spend. That too. And, um, I just couldn't get the water changes enough through to keep that many fish in one tank. But yeah. it seems to work really well for you, like all these ram babies too. They're a great seller, aren't they? Yeah. They always sell. Have you ever not had the blue rams? Um, I, when, when I really got big time into the black rams, yeah. um, I still kept the blue rams, I just stopped breeding them. Okay. Uh, but I still prefer the blue ones over the black ones myself. Yeah. They... Which no one likes to hear that, by the way. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, so, so right now, what is popular? You've got, you've got black Venezuelan catfish, Corys. Yeah. Black rice fish are super popular. I've done, went down that, but you put black rice fish in this tank, you literally do not see them. No. And then black rams are popular. Um, uh, what else is going to come out black? You know, I mean, it's just really popular. Um, and I mean, to me, red, orange, and blue is far much better. I think we'll probably see like a swing back. I think we will. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, if I, if I could actually get them, yeah. I would do electric blue rams. I've never been able to get them to I have the same fertility problems. Yeah, and big time. Do you reckon it's, you know how we were talking before at breakfast? I reckon it is. So what's that thing called? The uh, hormone? They're horm hormone treated. Yeah, yeah, so the hormones new, new to them. Yeah. You have to get them from a breeder, I think. Yeah, but who has them? Exactly. Yeah. And then the exactly. ones you do get in, like the electric blue rams you get in, they last They're like two skinny weeks. Skinny and they last, and if you, I mean, if you can get one spawn, then, okay, then you're six months still down the road, right? But you're in the clear kind of. You kind happens. of get in the clear if you can get that. What are these little, so these little specky things, I get these in my fish room too on the glass. Oh, are these on the inside? Oh, yeah. th these are limpids. Limpids, yeah. Now, I cannot tell you how I got them in this tank. I haven't added anything to the tank. Haven't added any plants. You hate limpids though, don't you? I hate them. But, but how you get rid of them is you go in and you squish them one at a time. Yeah, but it's like an uphill battle. You're never gonna get rid of them now. No, you will eventually. Uh, I'll have to put copper in here. So like this is one right here. Squish, squish, squish. <laughs> and then the quarries will eat it. 
Rest in peace, limpids. No, no, that's how I get rid of them. Need more. So you, you so you will put copper in here? Yeah, but I'll probably wait until I have plenty of baby stir base. Because I think it'll slow the adults down for a while. Yeah. But I have the backup breeders right here. True. And, and Sturbays will breed at, at, at this size. Yeah, they will, yeah. Um, I also saw another thing in here. Underneath. Oh, those, those are the um, 201 Plecos. So the tiles, you put the tiles in there. The tiles. Or the... Oh, the leaves? Yeah, the leaves. Or yeah, that was for, that was for, Corey, or for Pleco Fry. Yeah. So if, if we um, pick this one up right here. How much do they sell for here? I don't know, about 24 bucks wholesale. That's not too bad. No, yeah, it's a cool little fish. They are so cool. And you breed them pretty easy too? Yeah, just like in Sisters. Not as many eggs. I mean, um, 20, 25 eggs. Yeah. Not like, you know, like the normal bristle nose, you're going to get maybe 50 to 100 eggs. Harlan's got them like 200 once. Yeah, that's... Yeah. And it's like, what do I do with all these? Where do you grow them out? And they create so much waste. So, so here's the thing. Baby bristle nose work really good in the bottom of fry tanks. Yeah. So like, like for example, if I had baby bristle nose in here, be there'd clean. be no algae. Yeah. And, and literally, if... And all that waste goes to the back behind the mouth. Yes, top. yeah. So I don't have any going right now, but if I put bristle nose in this tank, tomorrow the side would be clean. Yeah. Um, and it's surprising how quick. It only takes one or two. No, they stuff themselves. Yeah. These are the adults of the snowblower. And you yeah. can see how fat they are. They're in the caves. They're monsters. Get the torch? Um, or the flashlight? Yeah, I'm getting this. This one works really good. Well, I thought all three of them in there were females, but then there's babies. Well, that must be the male then. He just must be stuffed. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. So. I swear we've... Oh, we missed down here. A blue phantom. Yes. Do you know how much that would sell for in Australia? No, but tell me. Like 15 grand probably. Really? That fish, yeah. Oh, you can have all those. <laughs> oh, have I've, you read them? I've had two spawns. I only, ha I only have two babies. Two babies. Yeah, how many eggs do they have? A lot. How many like? Probably a hundred. Crazy. Um, but the first spawn was totally unexpected. And uh, I... I couldn't, or I didn't, I didn't provide, or I couldn't provide the babies the right food. Yeah. Uh, the second spawn, I actually uh, pulled the eggs out and hatched them, cause I, but I couldn't, there's no information online because no one spawned them. Yeah. And, and then someone said, well, no one spawned them, that's why you can't find anything. So in this tank, I have two fry still alive. In this one? Yeah, I'm, oh. I could dig for them, oh, it's I not that it. hard. Yeah. There, oh, if you don't mind digging. Uh, nice. There he is. But cool looking though, right? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I mean... So what do they sell for here? A lot. They do? Yeah. So I've been offered um, 125 for the babies. Yeah, right. But I'm like, no, I don't want to sell those. I only got two. Why would I want to sell those? Yeah, keep them. Um, I mean, these I've had, I had those for seven or eight years. Before I get this, if you get in here, you're gonna get Leave. wet. <laughs> Leave my room. Thank you. <laughs> so you had these for eight years. Eight years. I got them. them. I got them about. They've been here for eight years in that tank. What? Why has Corey never filmed these? He uh, because he doesn't like to get down like that. Oh. And you need a torch again. God, now he's got me saying it. <laughs> torch. <laughs> Contagious. So you've had these for eight years. Yes. I've never known. Is that how long it must take them? So I, I got them as an inch and a half. I grew tons of Praycox rainbows on top of them. Yeah. Tons of them. Look how furry they get. Yeah, they get... Oh, yeah. Big time on... Is and that the male in there? I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I rarely have seen them out of the caves. Now, normally... The female won't go in a cave until she's breeding. Yeah. But, but with the, well, there is one female on the wood right above this cave. Yeah, that's the female. So that might be the female. 
Yeah. I think I only have one female. How many do you have? Three. Um, no, I think there's five in there. So you lost a couple on the way? Yeah, because I bought seven originally. I think I lost two. So, I, okay. I know I've lost one female because, because she was... Um, you know when they're trapped and how graded up their skin can get? Yeah, she got a fungus or something. Yeah, going. she got fungus. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't cure it, or I didn't cure it. They're, they're so brutal when it comes to breeding. Yeah, they are. And it's like an eight-year wait, and yeah. then after eight years, you just lose. You know, but, like that. But, but part of it, like I've been to the Amazon where you see the all the pleco caves in the in the mud. We're breeding them in solid surfaces, so. I'm thinking that most of their caves are not solid surfaces. They're, they're mud. Yeah, like, yeah, and so moves. there's more give. Yeah. And so they don't get chewed up as bad. They probably also get covered in it like a... Yeah, you know, like a know, mucus kind of. I was going to say, you know when ladies go and get like a mud, yes. yeah, like yeah. A mud bath? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. But I do like them. Um, they're like big 201s. Yeah. With a little bit of blue, and the, and the blue disappears a little bit as they get older. Yeah, it does, but... But still, you so know... So, how did you lose the babies? What happened? I could, they weren't eating. They just weren't eating. They just weren't eating, or I, or I wasn't. So, these guys, what I did is I put... Um, they were in a tray. Yeah. I put a bunch of leaves. Yeah. Um, I put... I put lots of baby brine shrimp, zucchini, I'm thinking, and, and some chopped up blood. I said, everything I could feed them... Is in there is in there. Everything that I think they could possibly eat. And I have no idea what kept them alive. But I only got two out of, um, that hatch was about 42. And, and, you know, I'm looking at it, okay, give me another spawn I want to try again. This is like the thing um, with fish keeping. Right now we're looking at all your successes, but only you're, you're the only oh. person here that knows all your failures. There's, there's probably 10 failures for every success. Yeah, I know, like, I think I thought at the start that you were doing everything perfect. Like I was like, yeah. he doesn't lose a ram, he doesn't whatever. And now like, no. I, I mean, as I've started breeding fish, I realize that too. Yeah. But it's, oh, it's a hobby made of mistakes, and not it a is. hobby. And correcting them. Yeah. And, and but you can't correct them all in one step. No, it's a. You only okay. correct one step at a time. Well, it's like you got to correct them in four months. Right. When you get another chance. When you get an, you wait for that other chance. Yeah. I think that's part of the addictive thing of it. Yeah, I think so. And you may have the same bug of the perfectionism. So it's like yeah. you, you're not satisfied until you get the whole batch. That's what I want. I want all of them. I know. Damn. It's so cool to see a project go from eight years and you can see the final product in one and, tiny and, little room. And, and, you know, people don't understand that some things take... You know, I often... When, well, I always end my talks with the three Ps. Yeah. You know what they are? No. You haven't watched my videos? Oh, what? The talks? I never, I never say them on Corey's channel, but don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. the patience, perseverance, and practice. Okay. Not yeah. necessarily in that order. What is it patience? Patience. You have to have patience. Let those fish grow up. Um, practice. If it doesn't work this time, try it again. You know, so, I mean, people get German blue rams. They kill them all. Well, what did you do? What, can you ch what one thing can you change for next time? Mm. And then perseverance is you just got to keep going. Yeah. Can't give up. No. It's far easier to give up than... What's the one thing we were talking about before that you couldn't get right? That you were... The Congos. Oh, the... The um, They're puffers. Like, yeah, the oh, puffers, yeah. They're crazy. Oh, yeah. The other thing is, is like, how much time can you spend all that time on that tank space? Um... In, in a room this size. I mean, how many tanks are in? Did you count the tanks yet? You haven't counted them yet? Yeah, we'll quickly count them. 41 in here. Yeah. <laughs> so how big's the room? 10 by 10. Feet. Not quite 10 by 10. What's right. this room actually meant for? So this room and the room next door, the laundry room, were the, when we moved in the house, were unfinished. Right. The wall was here, but it had nothing, no, nothing on it. Okay. So, I didn't build this originally as a fish room. I built it as a storage room. So there's no insulation. Wish there was. Now, now yeah. I wish there was. Um, behind that wall is my furnace and hot water heater. 
Well, I'd kind of get some ambient heat from there, wouldn't it? Except for if anything ever breaks on them, I have to take this rack out. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that from a video. So, yeah. so you can see, you can see right up there, there's a hinge. Yeah. And it comes all the way over to here. Yeah. And that whole thing will hinge out into the room this way towards okay. you. You had to do that once with Corey, didn't I've you? had to do it once. I, I've actually had to do it twice, once with Corey and once before that. Yeah. So the hot water heater sits back there. My, my air pump is back there, which is a bad idea, just so you know. Oh, yeah. Especially right. for one bus. But it's back there. It's a linear piston. So pump. it's behind that wall. Yes. Well, the other, the other only fish we actually haven't seen are the blue fame. I can see oh these. yeah, I think there's just one pair in there. Are you breeding them? Trying to. Yeah. Um, I've had I've had fry twice, uh, but both times it's like the day before I go out of town. Oh. It's like that doesn't work. <laughs> well, that is the most stunning male. Yeah, it's nice. And the female's hopefully in a cave somewhere. Probably. Hopefully doing the jobs. Yeah, but he's stunning. I've been thinking about those like angels. I've watched so many videos of them over the years, yeah. like for the last like seven or eight years. So I can't I, believe how good they look. I know. I, I think I've been working on on be getting what they call the high coverage. Yeah, I mean, which like, is getting rid of the white. Look at that one there. Yes. How many generations in are you now? Um, about ten, I think. Ten. But I would consider eight breeding. Yeah. Um, and, and I've always interjected new blood. So, so recently, um, I just got these two up here. These are two males. Yeah. Um, from, uh, one of the guys we're going to see, uh, on, on your time here to try to bring new blood in. These would be a popular seller too, wouldn't they? Oh yeah. These fish probably funded most of everything else you see. Really? Yeah. Like the whole fish room? Yes. Trading, selling, whatever. They pretty much funded it all. How many have you made total, you think? Probably 20, 30,000. <laughs> Jeez. This is a cool tank. With the big Anubius. Yeah, that, this was, uh, I actually got the Anubius idea from uh, when I was a home show judge. Yeah. And obviously the, the blue Akara are hiding from us because I just turned the lights way up. He had, a, he had a piece of uh, driftwood that went all the way across a 180 gallon tank mm -hmm. with just Anubius all over it. I thought that was kind of cool. So when these guys spawn, they spawn on the backside of that rock and on the backside of that rock. Do you pull those rocks out or do you? Sometimes. Yeah. If I need them, come out guys. <laughs> yeah. They'll come out as we get used to it, as they get used to it. So this is these a cool are 397s. Tank. And this, this tank is kind of in the making. Yeah. Uh, they they move the gravel, but um, and we'll get B roll later, I'm sure. But yes. if you look in the tubes, oh, you got babies in there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like and there. check the tube on the very left. Yeah. Over here. Can you oh, see yeah. it? No. There you go. Yeah. No, you can see the babies up the back. Right. I think there's two sizes in there. There are. There's two different spawns. Um, I think one of these two males is sitting on eggs. I'm not positive. Oh, there's definitely eggs in that first one. In the one on the left, right? Yeah. 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 See, he's fanning away like that. Yep. They're and actually the, quite developed. I saw and like the female is the one sitting by the. Uh, yeah. See how fat she is? Yeah, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> Do you and find these hard to breed? No. Yeah. I found it. I found it. the The hardest part is waiting for them to grow. Yes. Corey had these for. Three and a half, I think. I think three to three and a half years in his fish room. Mm -hmm. Nothing was happening. He brought them over here. I think I had them for almost two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So that's if you think about it, that's five years before any spawns. Most people are going to say, "Oh, it's not working for me." Mm -hmm. Well, that's because they don't keep them long enough. So I think the two and a half year marks when you get them going. Yeah. Two and a half, three years. The rainbow fish malt. Yeah. And so I breed these on top of those. And it's good too. These help um, yeah. as dithers. Yes. For down exactly. below. And the mop is probably... Oh, I'd be loaded. Probably loaded with eggs.
Jeez, hundreds. hundreds. Yeah. So we could probably set this up to hatch later. Yeah, definitely. Put a new mop in. I love, the Praycocks are like the nicest looking rainbow fish. They're my favorite. Oh, for sure. How long have you had these for? They look really old. I've been spawning these for, um, God, I don't know how many years, long time. These are fry of fry of fry of fry. Are they the ones yeah. you originally got from Gary Lang? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he'd have the same ones. Yeah. These are old males, see how red? Yes. Yeah, look how red their fins get. They're like wine. Yeah. They just get better with age. Yeah. Yeah, they're such a cool fish. And they, yeah, like what I was going to say is they're great dithers. I'm yes. sure they make the yeah. plecos feel so comfortable. Yeah. So one other fish I used to have in here spawning at the same time was sturbay cories. You had them in here too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the sturbays would lay eggs all over the glass. The rainbows would lay eggs in the mop, and the plecos would use the tubes. <laughs> uh, but then one day, the sturbays found the mop. Ah. And then, and then that was the end of the sturbays and the rainbows, because, I yeah. mean, the sturbays would still spawn. And you could get the sturbay eggs as long as the rainbows didn't get to them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, these are the world famous oh, okay. so, yeah. wild caught discus. Yeah, so these, this tank is wild caught from Peru. These are actual wild caught. These are actual wild caught. Wow. Um, I'm not getting spawns from them anymore. Yeah. Uh, I probably could if I spent more time. What specifically are these ones? Peruvian red spot greens. Okay. And when they catch them in the wild in Peru, they grade them price-wise by how many red spots they have. The more red spots, the more valuable. Right. And they get all those barring too. Yeah. They're so pretty. Some people think the barring is from stress. No. And some people don't. Um, I'm, I'm a believer that it just depends on the strain. I don't think it's about stress at all. I think because don't they breed on the trunks of trees? Yes. So you'd think that evolutionarily yes. that would help yeah. to look like branches exactly. and blend in. Yeah. Like if they could sit underneath some branches. And they're fairly tame. Um, they're super tame. You know, uh, these guys will eat dry food and frozen food. How was the process trying to get them onto that? It was easy. I only fed them dry food when we got them in. Uh, you know what's weird? I actually think wild fish are easier sometimes. Far easier. <laughs> They're um, less fussy. I turned the lights up over here and all of a sudden these got all shy on me. So these are, these are all F1s. Yeah. Come on, guys. I don't know if they'll come out. They yeah, might. Here they come. Come on, guys. Look these, at these, both of these discus tanks are in for some big change, though. There's something in them that I don't like. What's that? The slate bottom. I put oh. it in because I thought it would be cool, but I also think it's harboring a lot of excess uh, detritus. Yeah. And uh, I want to take it all out, but to take it all out, I have to take everything out of the tank. Yeah, that'll be a pain. And so That'll be painful. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a little pair here going, I think. Yeah, in here there's two pairs. One spawns over here, one spawns over here. Uh, I haven't done anything with eggs for a long time, though. But you do you manually raise yes. discus fry? Yeah. yeah. That process would be laborious. Yeah, it is. And I gotta be here. Oh, look, oh. the phone's ringing. <laughs> My very first wild ones were about, is on the very first trip to Peru, I brought five. I had, I had got seven. Five made it home from shipping, mm -hmm. or five made it to shipping, I should put it that way. One of those that shipped died in transit, so I ended up with four. And then I had those for two years, uh, no spawns. I got one spawn out of them, another spawn, three small. Uh, they kept getting smaller. Um, and, um, and all of those babies are gone out of the fish room. But then we went back, um, and I brought back these guys as 50 cent piece size discus. Yeah. Grew did you these. collect them or did you get them from a wholesaler? No, um, we, we got these from a, a collector, a wholesaler guy. And I traded a baseball hat for him. Really? Yeah, one of, yeah. <laughs> what was on the baseball hat? It was one of the co-op ones. Oh, okay. And I, I was promised to get 
that replaced, yeah. but then they were out of them and they didn't oh, no. run those out at cuts anymore. So, so you lost the co-op match. I lo yeah. I think it was a good trade. Yeah. So anyway, so I brought these back and then I had two or three um, pairings and spawns, which produced a bunch of these and then I kept these ones from them. Did you ever bother trying to do the whole, let them raise them oh, themselves? Oh yeah, always try that at first. Okay, didn't because work? No, no, no. They, they never got to that point. I think it's uh, too much for them to try and yeah. try and get used to, especially so. you go from a whole Amazon rainforest to right. exactly four foot fish tank. It yeah. makes it hard. Yeah. yeah, it definitely does. This is cool. This is the coolest office. I wanted to point out too your appreciation for art. Would you look at that? Yes, there's some that are originals. This one's actually from a, a very famous Australian, Tracy. Tracy Verdi. And this is Sam. Yeah, um, he's. I've got several of his. Yeah, he's like the king of it. This is one that we uh, got in Iquitos. We uh, found an artist on the artist row down there and had him commissioned to do that. That's a really nice one. Uh, I don't know the name of this one. This is also from our club where no one was going to outbid me. <laughs> what? There's more. So these tanks came out of necessity for the fish rooms too warm. What temperature are you on the fish room? Most of the tanks will go about, um, if there's no heaters, they'll be about 78, 79 degrees. Oh yeah, yeah, so hot. And it's not for the rice fish, it's for the catfish. Oh, what are these? These are babies. Baby Skylar, what are yes. they called? Yes, C CW038s. They don't even look like I their I couldn't keep yet. them alive in the fish room. It was just too hot. Yeah. They are so cute. Yeah, these are, are they hard one to raise up or? For me, yes, so far. And you think it was just the temperature was too hot? Yeah, I've been working on it. So these are even smaller babies. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I love their little whiskers. Yeah. And you get them real close on them. But, but what you're going to really love is what they actually look like if, if they're cooperating. Yeah, I mean, um, to the rice fish as well, they're really nice. Yeah, so these came in from the pond from outdoors for the winter time. Okay, so these are in your summer ponds. Um, and these are what they call platinum rice fish. Yeah, we've got these as well, but yeah. they're not nearly as nice as yours in Australia. Yeah, these have that nice stripe sheen. on the head. Yeah, the sheen. the sheen. And then the undertail, like bit two, it's right. really nice as well. Right. That's awesome. You got to grow on Java moss too. No, horrible. I buy really? that from people. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were growing it. I was like, I wish. That looks nice. I mean, like this is, this is how I typically get it. Oh, covered in duckweed. So do you manually remove all those little pieces of duckweed? I will before I put it in a fish tank. What about snail eggs? And, How do you and, check for and that? And I'll, I'll kill the snails with copper and um, alum. Yeah, I've done alum before. Uh-oh. I, I can't go in the fish room now. Yeah, you got to quarantine yourself. <laughs> to quarantine yourself. <laughs> I bet there's still going to be little pieces of it I know. in your hair. I know. You know you can dry duckweed and use it as an herb for your cooking. What? I thought you were going to say you could dry it and feed it to your fish and like everyone knows that trick. Actually, if you dry it, grind it up, you'll have a whole bunch of duckweed. Yeah. It'll just produce. So let's go see where those catfish come from first. Yeah. Here we go. They come from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I recently had a big die off of half of them in here. No. But if you look at the male, look at his fins. Oh my gosh. Is that incredible? That's, yes. This is my favorite. Right That's now, this so is cool. Like right here. What it's my the favorite heck? fish in the fish room right now. Or in my house. They're like threadfin. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. They come so, from cool water south of the Amazon on the Brazil coast. Even though this, um, this says 77 degrees, yeah. uh, the tank is about 74. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it feels. Cool yeah. enough. They're easy to spawn in here. How do you get them to breed? Well, I used to have them spawning almost every week. They spawn in clusters, like up in the corners. Yeah. Um, but do then they I, eat then their I, spawns? No. Then I had a I had a weird where I lost about half of them that I had got, and I haven't had a spawn since. But I'm sure that I've got males and females still. Yeah, I think the so, males are obviously. Obviously, the long fins. I think yeah. Fin, yeah. And then the females probably these. So I just got to get them back in condition. And then it was just rain and a cool water spawn. Yeah. Or a cool water. 